1953, Earth experienced a war of the worlds. Common bacteria stopped the aliens, but it didn't kill them. Instead, the aliens lapsed into a state of deep hibernation. Now the aliens have been resurrected, more terrifying than before. In 1953, aliens started taking over the world. Today, they're taking over our bodies. Welcome to another episode of It Could Have Been A Classic Well, where do we start on this? Uh, right, War of the Wells My God, man They really fucked it up when they made this uh, War of the Wells Well, I've sat through this uh, I, I actually picked up the, uh, the DVD set a few days ago uh, I couldn't believe it. I said, yeah, the final, the the final season, uh, season two, and this is gonna be the the downfall of what could have been the potential. So, in 1988, uh, we got a TV series. I remember there were a lot of uh, we didn't get it for about a year later in the UK, and uh, it was really sporadic when it was shown here. Uh, when I first came across it, it was in, it was in uh, I think it was Starlog and SFX magazine, but I think it might have been Starlog, I don't think SFX were out then. And I read about it, and then I saw it on, uh, I saw a poster of it in the video library. The aliens are back, a big hand on the earth, you know, the free and and I thought, oh, excellent. So, you know, I waited, I couldn't get it out for about a week, somebody were renting it, it was just like the invaders. Uh, that terrible remake and I got the first uh, two cassettes of the pilot movie and two episodes of the series I went home right side and I watched it and I thought fucking hell are you fucking kidding me at the time I thought it were cool right maybe it was the age I was living in I don't really know and now I'm gonna go into this basically after 1953, I mean, there's so many ridiculous points in this series, but there is some episodes that make it worth looking at. Right, so we go back to the, this is the sequel, not to the, uh, the H.G. Wells. I suppose it is, in, I, I suppose we're going to have to go cross realities here. This is easiest way to say that each invasion's in a, pre, in a different reality. That you've got well you've got uh, the original book which is a classic of science fiction and I am not on here knocking it it's exemplary and so is the Jeff Wayne album and that is a masterpiece which I've got and I'm gonna take them out and we'll never talk bad about them right the Tom Cruise film I will knock I will not knock the 1953 film to me it's brilliant uh, Right, there's there's a bit of a mystery here because in War of the Worlds TV series, just before I start, there was a pilot episode made about ten years after the film, and uh, it was it was an unfinished pilot which I think they were using it to pitch to the company George Palmer involved, and they actually had a really good concept about us pursuing them thirty years or so later into deep space. We must backtrack on their technology and follow them out into space to say, you know, 
and it's about a ship, I think it's called Destiny or something. <laughs> no, Pegasus. <clears throat> Earth built six starships to pursue the aliens' fleet because they've lost and they go back into deep space. And they come across worlds where they're devastation, what they've been doing. And there's robot people and uh, human, tra honourable tribesmen, other alien strange life forms. It, because they come from uh, the star system Centauri and it's all around that and how they're going to stop the next invasion and why they attack, it's all that but it had a lot of potential did this I've actually watched that today, it's on YouTube War of the Worlds, the unfinished pilot I was worth checking out and there was a model released of the Pegasus itself which is quite cool and I do remember this model but that never got made but the idea for War of the Worlds TV series obviously floated around in the 70s and later on, you know, and at some point Greg Strange and other people, uh, John Landis, is it John, I think it's John, not John Landis, it might, I think John Landis works on this, should have seen his there, anyway. Uh, they came up with this concept. Now, now the problem with War of the Worlds, it, the continuity and the ridiculousness of a lot of it, but you do end up watching it. I mean, I've got to admit, I've sat through quite a few episodes uh, over the weekend, and I have sort of, I've got to admit, there's been one or two I've actually thought are not bad. And you are quite fascinated by the aliens, but the one thing about this, with season two, there is a loop here, and you do get a finish. And that is one good thing, but it got cancelled, which I think it, it probably was at best. Now, it does have a cult following. Now, you know the rules of could have been a classic. Got, it's got, it can't go beyond three seasons. It's got to have failed. And that's it. I know I've said about movies, but this is totally taken away from the film, right? Because, right? trust me, to me, this stands on its own, even though the hints are there with the connections, right? So I can't, the film is a classic, established, this rides on its wings. Now, is the TV series capable of being a classic? Now, we're going to go into it. Right, so, it's at 89, right, it's called 89, 88. 88 was a good year for me. Uh, right, so, that's me thinking about the past. So, it starts off, after the first invasion, right, right, and they don't come from Mars. They never seem to come from Mars. I don't, you, you know what I mean? So, anyway, after the first invasion, they get done, you know the story, they get done by bacteria and, and they're all dead. But they're not. Now, it, now Clayton Forrester, the scientist that was in the last film, he took a, he dealt with a lot of the technology and stuff after the invasion. And they couldn't uh, back work engineer a lot of it, so they just put it in cupboards. Now, the aliens, he said they weren't dead, he said they'd gone into comatose. But the government didn't believe him, so they put them all in big cans and shoved them on nuclear waste sites. Right, now get this, right? Nobody remembers the nobody in the world remembers the invasion because everybody suffers from selective amnesia. It's a race for Mr. Right, now now this is where the film in 50, they took the planet in six days. They devastated our civilization. They took it to basically down to nothing and it says that in the film and the books so within six before seven days they took they took the world but somehow within 40 years the world's fucking hunky dory everybody's forgotten about it and we're all in just in deep denial except jared martin's character well he's the adopted son of the scientist and he's a genius and he's, he doesn't like military, he's one of these. You've got the standard stereotype characters, you've got the female scientist. She's like really intelligent and she's a single mother and all this. And she's, she's, great. she's a great actress, like Janet Mason Green. And uh, then you've got the dude in the wheelchair. He's a, he's a computer genius, he can hack any system in the world, he can create program. This was going back then, right, he can do anything. And then we've got your all out American hero, Colonel Ironhorse, which I, he's my, one of my favourite characters in this. And he was actually more popular than the other three, even though Jared Martin had the star in him. Richard Chaves over in uh, Predator's Poncho. Uh, you know, he was a great actor. Uh, 
he was getting more mail than the rest of them. So I don't know why they got rid of him. It was ridiculous. And I did like the dude uh, in the wheelchair, Richard Aikens, a good actor. He was great. I loved his character. I like I like the computer nerdy genius type. I think we all do. You know, it solves that problem. Well, anyway, these terrorists. This is all quick. The terrorists coming. Uh, these terrorists, uh, People's Liberation Front, attack this nuclear waste site. They're gonna uh, they kill all guards there, and they're gonna let off a nuclear cloud unless their demands are met or something. So uh, anyway, some bullets go off, kill a few soldiers, and one aliens wakes up. He goes round, kidnaps, snap, wakes up the other aliens. They kill off the terrorists, take their bodies, for figure out what's been going on for the last thirty five years and wake up the rest of them, start kidnapping people and sod off. And so they end up finding, they always find a lair somewhere. Anyway, they end up uh, living in some nuclear, do uh, you know where they set off the atomic bombs are in a cave? They all live there, loads of them. So then anyway, they get a couple of trucks, drive off. And then every week after that, it's them undoing their plots to take over at will, but they're in contact with the other lot back home on the planet Morfrax or Morfla, because the name changes twice. And and basically it's them everywhere. I mean they are I mean they're malevolent, they don't give two fucks about us at all. Uh, but there is some episodes that stand out in this series which gives it potential and, and I, I did like the connections to the nineteen fifties movie, even though the series takes it totally somewhere else so we get on to like these episodes which pilot episode they, they find that there's three ships and three of the uh, uh, walker ships you know and they get them and, and the, 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 the three of them could take over at well because it's just cats but Harrison Ford and his team I Colonel Inos they put a stop to it and that's all it pilot episode and then again like I said every week it's them undoing everything so we move along now I've written a list which our which makes this look it's a bloody awful series I'm not saying it in but there is a few little gems in there now season one I'd go for the pilot episode seriously it's not a bad hour and a half ride get pissed have a kebab sit down that's how I used to watch it on a Saturday night uh, and, and then jump to episode 13 forget the rest Right, it's dust to dust with this uh, American uh, American Indian and um, their technology and this ledger and all that. It's a great episode. Now, I quite enjoyed that. And then, jump to 15, Prodigal Son. Of course, John Kalikos. Sci-fi god in himself. He plays an alien who wasn't affected by... When he crashed in the 50s in Invasion, he got out. All these people died, and he, uh, the bacteria didn't affect him because he had a mutation, but he can't jump from body to body. Uh, and then there's the raising of Lazarus, which is a good episode. Again, it's not so bad. This is about another alien. Uh, you get to where uh, it's all he crashes the recon scout before the invasion, find a pod with one of them in. Now they have this ability to jump through your body and there is some grisly things. When they die, right, when they die, right, it's, uh, how do you say it? They sort of like slime up, but they have this three fingered hand that comes out of your stomach and like grabs your face. I mean, they're all right. I mean, the advocacy, they have a leadership, they're bloody ridiculous. They sit in, in a cave all stood together all day. I don't know what they're meant to be doing. They're meant to be fucking leaders of it all. But uh, it's, uh, they all think in threes. So, I reckon, and then there's an episode with, all right, the meaning of Lancaster. But the final one, now the final episode, season one, is the, for me, is the best one. It's ridiculous. Another alien race turns up and hunts their alien race. And it's the six, she's from the planet Qatar, and she's the synth android. And she's slaughtering all, all aliens, and aliens are getting pissed about it. So they go and retaliate. And she teams up with Blackwood and all them, and they kill everybody. And they save her, and she saves them. And she's making out, she's French, she's only here for seven days, she's here to kill advocacy. But when she sends a transmission in her language, I don't believe. Now, 
I don't believe Blackwood's going to be this gullible that she's here just to help us because they're benevolent. Basically, they're looking for a new food source, and them, the other lot, the Mothrans or the Moth Mortaxans or whatever, they're contaminating it and where the food source. So she said, I'll be back in one year when the space alignments, space folds to create a wormhole so we can come back with reinforcements. Yeah, well done, Blackwood. You've just invited a new alien invasion to her. Thank you very much. So she goes off, and that, and he just finishes in smiling, thinking it's all wonderful. Well, it's not as simple as that. They've got their own agenda. Now, now the episode with John Kalikos, he's an alien. Like I said, he's got his own agenda. He wants to play both sides off, but he wants to become like the power on the planet. But you do find out a bit more that there's three million of them on the way in the next few years to get ready for the invasion. But obviously they've held back because of this bacteria thing. And that's it. And every week you get to find out bits about them. And that's it. On the Angel of Death it finishes. Now it's season one, the classic. <sighs> no, we have to go into season two. And... I'm going to show you season two. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you because season two totally befuddled me. It, it season two was so ridiculous and so bad that I could never really enter world of the worlds. Now get this right. I'm going to show you this right, and you tell me. You tell me what this is about. This way, looking up top. Right, here we go. So now you've seen that, right, hang on, let's get back in there. Right, so we have season two. Now, get this, right. Now, season two don't make any fucking sense to me. It, 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 trust me, it's crazy, right. And this is now, I came across season two one Saturday night. I didn't even know season two existed. <coughs> it was about two, it was about 1990. Two ITV, Yorkshire TV had bought it. I put it on Saturday at one o'clock in the morning. I used to go out clubbing back then. But I remember I used to come in, it was on like two o'clock in the morning, you know, when 24 hour TV started. I used to come in absolutely wrecked. And I used to sit and think, oh, what it was, I'll set the video for it. And I used to watch it every bloody Saturday when I come in. It was on just after two o'clock in the morning. And I thought, what the bloody hell is going on with this? So this is what it says in the opening intro. Opening voiceover. Right, there's rioting breaking out through the city. The fire is continuing to burn everywhere. Troops are shooting people. My God, I don't know why there's a woman dying in front of me and no one's helping her. There are conflicting reports about who or what started the chaos. Will someone tell me what's happening? It, this is madness. What is this world coming to? Off-screen news reports can flies around a model nighttime cityscape. 
So, right, that's season two, that's the opening. Season two, then suddenly we jump to this planet and this ball of light escapes from it, it blows up and that's it. And then and then obviously we 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 end up at this factory and it's this lot they're all they've got our bodies now, they look like us, and they're all dressed like in these like uniforms. And all the other lot in the original invasion, they all get put to death. They, I mean, the slaughter, a lot of them, because these are the perfect, these are higher up, these are perfect ones. And there were lightning storms on the planet and that were it, and that's all we know. So they, like, every week it's the same formula. They're coming up with ways to get rid of us. But they have a god called the Eternal. And I don't know what that thing does. It's just this big blob with an eyeball. It sort of appears and guides them, whether it's evil or not, I don't know. And and every week, like anyway, in the first two episodes, Harrison Blackwood, they all get wiped out except Harrison Blackwood, uh, and rest of them, dude in wheelchair, like the uh, Richard uh, the actor Norton, and and and, and Colonel Einhoff blows his brains out because they clone him, destroy the Blackwood project, the aliens. I mean, it's a victory to them to wipe them out. But it never explains what happened to society. So from first season, right, where that Angel of Death alien, the, the Angel of Death, the episode, where she fucks off back into deep space, right? What happened on Earth? What, what, what? What happened? Suddenly society, it's like the world of Mad Max, and they tried to create this, like, world of, like, goths and... Uh, synthesised me like we're all futuristic and everybody, nobody gives a shit about anything and governments just cut yourself off from people now there is an episode where we mentioned our welfare payments have been stopped so it's like the world's gone into economic ruin don't explain how society's ended up like but this happened in a year so I don't know I do know if you've know let me know so then they're aliens are here there's a couple of hundred of them after the slaughtered their own kind right Right, so there's a few hundred of them left. Then every week they're up to all kinds of plots and schemes. And, and, and Adrian Paul Highlander comes into it and he takes over from Colonel Ionos. And, and three of them, they have a secret command bunker base in a power station, which nobody knows, which is just dandy. And, and it's the three of them every week undoing the plots. And the little girl, she falls in love with an alien. Who's got who gets human emotions and you you get the standard stories of the the, the hybrid aliens that's got feelings, yeah, the disease, let's wipe them out, you know, sublimable messages, advertising. But again, nobody remembers the 1953 invasion. But this series is connected to the film. So and the aliens have names as well, and they're more like the worship this big blob thing called the Eternal. So season two. Second Wave, which I do recommend to watch, which is hilarious. Uh, see Seth of Emon. I quite like that one. Apparently, well, this race, they were invading other planets. They went to this humanoid planet where humans can make crystals, which is their te organic and crystalline technology, which I do like that concept. Uh, the kidnapper, they wake her up because they've lost the power crystals. They're on resources, only a few hundred of them. So we got that. That's a great episode, and she gives Alison the crystal and her and her son sacrifice themselves. Or did they ascend to an eye plant? I don't know. Uh, we get the Messiah, starring, of course, Roy Finnis. Only reason I watched it. Loved that episode. But one of the best ones is episode 11, Time to Read. Now, it comes out that there's the planetary alignment, right? And that they can go back, the eternal one, or, uh, he can open a portal, give them the, the energy or whatever, to send somebody back with the uh, cure to the bacteria that killed them all off, or made, you know, when they lost the war, to change history. And they go back to the 1950s, and, they, and it's all in black and bloody white. The film did all in black and white, I thought, what are you doing? Right, so we get to that, right? And then they're all running about, and leader aliens, the leader, he's injecting, uh, injects them and get back at war machines, start concrete earth, but they turn them, slot a lot of them. The Adrian Paul with big 50 cal machine gun takes them all out, and Jared Martin. I mean, he's really pessimistic now. He's a total different character to what he wanted first season. He's very dark and bitter. 
because something's happened in the world. Now, one of the big flaws of this, it would have been better if the aliens would have caused all this economic collapse that they'd have put people into bank, you know, infiltrated every level of society and government, and they created this chaos, which would have been easier for them to, how do you say, complete their agenda, but this, they never did. They all got slaughtered by their own lot, it turned up, and there's only a couple of hundred of them. So this is where this series goes right up its old ass, right? So then, like, they come back into the future and then we start getting onto other episodes. So, definitely check out Time to Reap. And after that, he's go to Obelisk, which is the final episode, episode 20. You think, I noticed they, they cut it down by three episodes. So all the characters have suddenly transformed with, since the last season into these dark, negative people right and it comes out that the leader of the aliens who who serves the the early one or whatever it's called the blob thing with the eyeball which i found totally pointless in the old thing right that he's going to wipe out humanity with the death spores and there's a thing called the module it's a very sacred object to him and inside you've got two crystals one of the past one of the future and he, he takes one that shows him his death set is going to wipe out humanity. But apparently the, the green one is of the past. And it all goes in to why they invaded us. And I'll give it this. They give you this really shitty explanation to why they came. And it totally contradicts everything in the first series. You sort of see it from they were, if they were humanoid. Like we're seeing it through their eyes but we see ourselves. And, and they all learn about that. First time it were an expedition because they, when the nukes went off during the Second World War, they saw the, the detector the flashes and they sent a, a force to Earth. Now, it never said did they come here to invade, it was meant to be an expeditionary force. But when they landed, they started conquering everywhere. But back on the planet, they're all quite benevolent. And then there's been other episodes where they're all rampaging all over the universe, slaughtering everybody against imperfections that society is, you know, they fight, strive to create perfection in, in, in what they're about. But then you find out this leader on Earth that it, because of him, their planet got destroyed. And that he, because he's, he's lover, she was in first invasion fleet, or the expeditionary force. And it cost their planet, damaged their planet because they used a lot of resources. And he killed the leader, and then he he set up uh, another invasion. So I shown with some of the episode, but showed you him invading other planets. That must have been under him because they needed crystals what to survive, but it didn't work. So they sacrificed most of his people because because of him, his, that their planet got destroyed. They all came to Earth. Well, he's second in command, the scientific genius, her son, as he, he runs off to tell. The, uh, the mother's daughter of the resistance, Alison Blackwood and, and uh, prof the professor lady, her daughter, because they're in love. You know, usual, I love the, I love the alien storyline. And that they're going to wipe out humanity. There's only 40 of them left. 40 of them left, that's all that's left of them. For all this, in this entire series, 40 of them left, and they've got one weapon left to use these death spore crystals and they let some of all test it out and it kills some people and then and, and then suddenly he finds her the meet at the secret love place and and he says look he steals the module and he gives it to him and and they phone Alison and, and Kincaid and mother they all turn up and they all get on crystal and they say why they're here and what's going on and all that and it, it completely absolutely undoes the 50s movie the first season second season and you think what are you kidding me and then we move on we move on that somehow they go to alien base there's 40 of them left you know where's the big ball thing that's not there that's probably gone off somewhere and 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 they show the rest of them truth aliens and they all turn on him you know but the daughter shoots him because he vaporizes is second in command son, but the daughter kills leader. And and that's it. And Alison Blackwood says, you know, it, it's let you know, it's a help us save our planet, you know. And and that's it then. Aliens go, well we'll see. And there's four of them, because they can't do anything. They, and she orders all their technology shot and they all just disappear. 
that's it, World of the Worlds. And and then next morning, they all go outside, sun's up, and, and that's how it finishes. I mean, you did get like a really rudimentary answer. Now the question is, there's so many flaws and so many bad points in this series that you can tear it apart, but for some reason, for some reason, right, this is where we're going now, you do watch it. And you think, well, oh, it's not that bad, is it? Do you know what I mean? And people do say to you, do you remember War of the Worlds? People do say that to you in the pub. They do, I've had people say, oh, do you remember that crazy fucking series that made no sense called War of the Worlds? And I've had that said to it numerous times over the years. <laughs> now, if you're not really into science, you're not going to know about this, but amongst the rest of us that are out there, we've all seen this. And some of us, come on, come on. But to a we do like it, don't we? Even though it's totally bad, we do like it. So, the question I put to you, which is difficult, could this have been a classic? And I can't give an answer. I sent a friend a text last night and he, he got back to me and said, maybe a cheesy classic, but could that go under? Could have been a classic. Now in the first season, there is potential that this could have been like an Invaders thing, which I think they sort of went for that theme, which I sort of get because it's cheaper. But if the stories, and there is, I mean, stories are no different to a lot of stuff we get today. It's just, they are quite basic. But there's one or two episodes in there which, which do stand out and quite good. Do you know what I mean? Even though it's ridiculous. Now I'm a big Jared Martin fan. And I love Fantastic Journey. You know, when they were on that island back in the 70s. Absolute classic actor. He, he's one of the 70s kings of science fiction to me. He was in Logan's Run. He, he, you know, he was in loads of stuff. Richard James, he's an icon anyway. Well, he's because he was in Predator's Poncho and we loved him in Predator. You know, and Janet Mason Grey, she's quite famous now. And she was in Odyssey 5 in a few episodes. So, I mean, and do you know, there's been some, quite some big stars in this. Roy Finnis appeared, John Kalikos. Uh, and others, you know. So, was War of the Worlds a classic? Or could we use the term cheesy classic or shit classic? I don't know. But there is potential. It's just season two gives you some kind of answer and closure, even though it did get cancelled. But there's so many flaws and so many... It, it was like, it's like me giving you 20 million saying go fucking waste it and write some rubbish and we'll make it. That's what they went with. There were no imagination going into this. Yet some big names worked on this series. Do you know what I mean? Like Greg Strangers, uh, you know. And there's certain things in there that could put it in. Now it does have a cult following. It has a cult form, that's for sure, I've checked that out, it does, and I spoke to a lot of people, and I've met a lot of people that do like it. So I'm going to give this, I'm going to give it, and I'm very hard for me to do it, could War of the Worlds television series could have been a classic. There is potential in there if it had been sorted out into the right direction. You might shoot me down for, you might shoot me down to this. Even today, when I put up the, I shared the unfinished pilot on Facebook, and one of my YouTube watchers, uh, Tom, uh, if you watch him, he put underneath, "Do you remember the 1980s? Did you watch the 1980s TV set? Well, you see what I mean. It's there. It lingers in the background, and people remember it. So I'm gonna. I'm, I'm sorry I said it could have been a classic if it had been done right. There is potential in there." and the episodes to watch. The final episode is called Obelisk and I do recommend watching that. Watch Second Wave, Sefer Vimon, Messiah, Time to Reap and then finish it with Obelisk. Fuck the rest of it off. No point because it's all standard stories but they're the five episodes that stand out in season, season two and season three is number five there. So, so what? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. 10 episodes between season 1 and 2 out of 43 is not too bad. Well, it's terrible actually, but 
I'd stick to that list of 10 episodes. You will you will get a whole idea of where this were going. It had potential, but I should I think this should have been more like the invaders, and it could have been Cold War of the Worlds, but had absolutely nothing to do with the movie. But it's too tied in to the 1953 movie. So that's another episode of Could Have Been a Classic. Uh, so that's it. I will be on live tonight, guys, at 7 o'clock. Let me know your thoughts on War of the Worlds. This has been a long one, but I get right excited, you know what I'm like. Uh, I will be on live at 7 o'clock tonight. I can't wait. Uh, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, and I will see you on the next video. So see you tonight, guys. Oh, Daniel, I hope you and your mum's all right because you sent me about an accident and stuff. I, you know, you, you're better now. So I just thought I'd ask. Right, guys, live long and prosper. Oh, no, no, I've got to say it. The thing they say. To life immortal.